people have never said this in other videos that i've watched and i've watched a ton of them you can see such a difference right here can't you oh i messed up i'm getting nervous i feel like i completely messed it up but 600 dollars worth no but on sale like if we're talking 400 maybe 450 <sighs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new then welcome. My name is Christina, and on my channel we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. Today we are going to be doing a video that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and I finally have the means to do it, and we are comparing the Dyson Airwrap with the Shark Flex Style. I already own the Shark Flex Style, I've done multiple videos on it, so I will link those down in the description box down below so you can kind of see them. We are going to be comparing either side of my hair we're going to be doing the same thing to both sides of my hair and really compare to see which one might trump the other i guess and really i don't know there's just so much debate on this i feel like people either love or hate the dyson as well as love or hate the shark i figured now is a really great time to do it because i know a lot of people really decide if they want to add the dyson to their christmas wish list or people are deciding if they want to purchase it for a loved one or a friend or something like that i have watched a ton of dyson airwrap videos through the years because i have always gone back and forth on whether or not I wanted one. So hopefully this brings some clarity to everybody. I have my flex style right here. It's my go-to device to dry my hair as well as give myself my usual blowouts. I use this as well as the curling barrels right here. Ooh, this thing is heavy. I do have the Dyson Airwrap in here. A family friend of mine actually owns this. This is hers. And she said that I could borrow it for this video. And I'm very, very grateful to her for that. I've never used a Dyson Airwrap, guys. I need to look at what is standard with the Dyson Airwrap because I really, oh my gosh, I look crazy. <laughs> I just saw myself in the viewfinder. Okay, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by my face, we have the hair drying attachment. She actually has four different barrels. It looks like they're the same length, but they are different widths. One is thicker than the other, and we have both the left and right sides. This is the older version, so you don't have the capability of doing that little twist thing on the very top, but that's okay because we have everything that we need right here. The smoothing brush we have two of those and the round brush but today I think I'm going to be focusing on the curling barrels because that seems to be one of the more popular ways that people like using the Dyson there are longer barrels when it comes to the curling attachments and it seems like these are the standard barrels right here whereas with the shark flex style the standard barrels are quite long comparatively. I think I'm gonna use the skinnier ones versus these fatter ones so we can at least try to get the same look on both sides. I always prep my hair with products. I find that that is the best way to have a style that lasts for a long time. I'm gonna prep with my Fable and Main leave-in conditioner, a couple spritz of that. I love this. It's so great for detangling. It also is a heat protectant and it also helps with frizz, just everything. I'm going to be using, again, Fable and Main, the hair oil. I like to use hair oil before and after using a hot tool device. Before is to protect my strands and then after is to finish them. And lastly, I'm gonna go in with this Kevin Murphy Bodybuilder Volumizing Mousse. I got this from my hairstylist and I really like it. See that? I love when hair products have like a fun application to them. So I'm just going to put this all up in my hair and then any additional I'm going to just work down. To get the visual, I'll do a couple of strands on either side so we can really see the difference or similarities between the two. I'm just gonna do a top and a bottom section. So I do own a Dyson hair dryer. Back when I bought it, I bought it when I had my perm still and I was thinking I was gonna have my perm for a long time and it had the diffuser and everything and I wasn't curling or you know, straightening my hair back then. I still use it to dry my hair. My husband uses the Dyson solely to dry his hair. And the dogs, <laughs> we use it on the dogs as well. So everyone in the family benefits from it. So I guess it's worth it. Doesn't seem to click in place. I don't like that, but it's in there. It's like secured in there. This side will be Dyson and then this side will be flex style. I already know the power of the Dyson is really good, 
let's see if this is different. I hear all the time that the hair dryer portion of it is weaker than the actual hair dryer. Still feels pretty powerful and it's kind of cool that the cool touch button is right here and all you do is just move up that power button. I like that. And I actually really like that it's thumb thumb height not thumb height i like that it's right where your thumb would be so you don't even have to move your hand out of position with the flex style one of my big gripes the power is down here so whenever i'm using my device either like this or like a hair dryer like this i'm holding it up here and then i have to move my hand down and turn it off here i believe they have it down there because they don't want you to accidentally turn it off or something which makes a lot of sense but it is kind of like not my preference but it's also not gonna stop me from using it it's still a really good device so my hair is actually just like damp it's not too wet so i'm gonna go ahead and take that off we're gonna put the attachment on the best way for me to figure out which attachment it is is to look in the mirror actually because the mirror will reflect which direction it's gonna go because when i just look at it head on i get confused but if I look in the mirror, I can see which way the arrows are pointing and I want my curls to go outwards. Something that I did not know, people have never said this in other videos that I've watched and I've watched a ton of them, is that the Dyson is not perfectly round. It's kind of like an oval shape. So when you hold it, it's a little bit more ergonomic, I think, than holding something that is completely circular like the shark neither of them are bulky neither of them are difficult to hold but it just feels more natural that's something to know and i never knew that let's go ahead and take our first section i'm gonna just take my usual size section about mm, maybe an inch or so and i'm gonna go ahead and wrap her oh that held on quick Cool shot. Okay, going to release it. Ooh, that is curly. I was gonna pin all of them up, but I actually wanna leave that there and we're gonna compare it to the shark on this side. So let's go ahead, dry the hair just a tad. Taking about the same size section. See, I have to use my other hand to turn it on. Okay, releasing that now. Okay, I think I held this a little bit longer. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna look back at the footage and see what's going on. Here is the Dyson side, nice and curly. And here is the Flex Shark style side, also nice and curly, but this one has a little bit more bounce. But the way I like to do it is I'll wrap it and then I'll hold it a little bit more horizontal to the head to get a little bit more volume. I don't remember if I did that here. I feel like instinctually I would have because that's usually how I use my flex style. We'll definitely try to be a little bit more intentional here. That aside, definitely curled this a little bit more, more bounce, you know. This one seems to be falling a little bit. Could be because we did this beforehand but let's go ahead and pin both of them anyways. And I'm just gonna follow the curl of these and pin them up against my head. They're already probably like cool, but we'll go ahead and do it anyways. I am noticing a couple of things right off the bat also, which is so 
interesting to me. The cool shot, this one actually seems like it gets pretty cool while the shark flex style takes a really long time to just not be hot. Not even get cool, but just not be like super hot anymore. I noticed that the shark flex style is definitely hotter. Like the temperature feels a little bit more aggressive. It may be the same temperature, who knows, but the technology of the Dyson maybe doesn't make it as apparent, but you can definitely tell, especially cause it's right up against your ear, you can feel that air and it's pretty hot. I will say the flex style does get very hot and I've always noticed that but you never really have to hold it on your hair for a long time anyway so it never bothered me too much it still doesn't really bother me that much to be honest but for this one I feel like this went from being very hot to just cool very quickly that was pretty impressive I'm gonna stop yapping and we're gonna do the rest of this bottom section and then I'll just kind of speed through it do some b-roll for you guys so you can see it and then I'll come back with my thoughts on it Okay, so I just finished the bottom half of my hair and I did actually think about a couple more things that I wanted to note before I forgot to note them for you guys. I definitely can tell that the flex style feels a little bit hotter the closer it gets to your face and I think the reason for that, just my theory, this is not proven, but my thinking behind that is the motor in this seems a little bit more aggressive. It's a little bit stronger, I guess. So I feel like it's drying my hair faster, but at the same time, it uh, blows the hot air more aggressively at your neck and you know your face in general. Whereas the Dyson does feel hot. You can definitely feel that heat as well, but it's not as aggressively like pushing at your skin, I guess. So it doesn't feel, it doesn't give the effect that it's as hot. It feels like they get the same amount of heat, but it doesn't feel like I'm getting as much of that heat backfire on me on the Dyson side. Also, something I'm noticing is with the actual curling barrels, how slippery my hair is on them. I've talked about this previously with the Shark Flex style. It is obviously a matte barrel. If you look closely, you might be able to see it, but you can definitely feel it. There is definitely a little bit of a grit there. You can also hear when I go like this, it doesn't sound completely smooth. It's not because my hands are dry, it's because the barrels have a little bit of a, a grip to it. Because of that, whenever I'm putting my hair in the barrel, it's going up the barrel or it's going up the hair really nicely, but I can't necessarily move it up and down the strands of my hair. And I kind of like doing that. I'll slowly kind of wiggle the shark flex style as I'm moving it upwards so that my hair is evenly covering the barrel and everything is laying flat on there. And also just, I don't know, I feel like my hair heats better whenever I just move it up and down when I'm going up towards you know my uh, scalp but the Dyson does not sound as rough does not feel as rough it still has a good grip to it but I'm noticing that whenever I like wiggle the Dyson up the hair I'm able to kind of smooth through those strands a little bit better so I can probably move it down a little more than I can with the flex style at some point when you have enough hair wrapped around it it won't budge like it won't let you go down the hair anymore but I'm noticing with the Dyson I can still get a good amount of like downward motion if I tried to I don't know if that's relevant to you guys but yeah I, I'm just noticing that so now I'm gonna go ahead and just finish this top section I guess and then I'll be back with my thoughts I'm thirsty though it's already getting hot in here Okay, so I just finished all of my hair, all except my curtain bangs. Doesn't this look like a funny little updo? Like, it looks like I intentionally tried to do this. The Dyson, 
even though it wasn't as aggressive, it seemed to be drying my hair more thoroughly. And the reason why I think that is, is because my the ends of my hair and like the, up to the mid shaft were completely dry, almost to the point where it felt a little bit, not straw like, but not silky, you know? Opposed to the shark, whenever I released it from the barrel and I took it in my fingertips and I was like rolling it to pin it up, I noticed that my hair just felt a little smoother. It also felt like it was wasn't completely dry. Sometimes I can't get it to where my roots are completely dry because it just gets really hot and it seems like it's dry already but when I take it out it looks like it's slightly wet but I never really have a too big of an issue because by the time I take my hair out of the pins my hair is completely dry so that's something to know that is all to say before I even take my hair out of these pins I'm probably going to leave it on for maybe another five minutes just to make sure that everything's cooled and then as far as my curtain bangs go I don't really want to split up doing either side to be honest i'm not very good at styling my curtain bangs in the first place so i feel like it's just going to be difficult and not look good either way if i try to split it up so i'm going to use the round brush from the dyson to round out my curtain bangs and see how it does because i already know what it looks like with my shark and i like it but i definitely have to work with it i'm going to wait like i said and then i'll come back show you guys what it looks like once I take all of the pins out. All right, let's remove them now. So curly. I'm still not gonna brush them out though. Oh, that's a big difference. You see that? This is the Shark Flex Style side. This is the Dyson side. This actually looks more curly opposed to that very first curl we did on either side. Are you guys seeing a difference? I feel like I am, but I could also be overthinking it. But that's kind of my job right now. I'm supposed to be overanalyzing this. Oh, okay, look. This part, not curled at all. Let's see what this side looks like around that same area. Definitely could be user error though. So, you know, we have to keep that in mind. This one is pretty uniformly curly oh i don't like that i miss that and it's like a little crimped i felt like the dyson side was a little bit more curly when i would take it out of the barrel so it was easier to pin like i didn't have as many stray hairs everywhere but i was able to coil it around my finger a lot better on the right side which is the dyson side it's been a while since i've used the flex style with the curling barrels. I usually, if I'm gonna do a blowout, I just use the round brush. It's just a lot faster and less fussy, honestly. Ooh, that one's nice and curly. You can see such a difference right here, can't you? Are these barrels the same size? I'm gonna have to look it up. Let's just put the curtain bangs up for now. Got all of the pins out. You wanna see the back? I know it looks crazy because it's not, like everything needs to be judged out, but I'll show you guys anyways. Both sides feel equally bouncy. So I'm going to remove this attachment and I'm gonna use this round brush. This one is definitely a lot smaller than the shark one. And the shark one is actually oval while the Dyson one is spherical. So that's opposite of the actual handle. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly try to style my curtain bangs things we'll see how that goes okay let's see how that looks oh wait i usually have to go in and adjust it but this is actually dude what look at that swoosh right there look at those swooshes like you could never that's so impressive i'm just gonna go in with my fingers judge everything i guess Okay, this is very curly. Both sides are too curly. I forgot that I don't typically pin when I use the barrels. I only pin when I use the round brush. Oh, I messed up. But I still think this is a good depiction of what the barrels do. Whoa, hold on. I'm getting nervous. Uh, should I brush it? No, I feel like that's gonna make it worse. Okay, I think I just need to let the curls settle. So I'm gonna check back in tomorrow morning. It's about midnight. <laughs> After I sleep on my curls, we'll see how they do. Let's assess them now also. I feel like I have pretty even volume on the top. Can you kind of see how this side looks like maybe the roots are a little bit wet still and it seems a little bit shinier. Well, no, they both look equally shiny, but I do feel like right here, it almost looks like my hair still looks a little wet because you can kind of see it's 
still kind of sectioned out because that hair wants to like stick to each other like the wet parts want to stick to each other i almost want to say the dyson side looks more curly but i'm gonna have to look into if these barrels are the same size and i will put it on the screen once i find out I think the results are pretty even right now though. If you just saw my head, my hair like this, you'd probably think I just used the same tool. But I definitely think sleeping on my hair tonight will show us how strong each curl is, like the longevity. But I'm really impressed by this round brush in my curtain bangs. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Maybe I need a smaller round brush for my curtain bangs. I just had to do like one go. Usually I go at least three times, like I do that entire process at least three times before i'm like okay that's it <laughs> typically though when i do use the barrels i don't pin them and usually it'll drop into really pretty curls and i'll just wear it like that but that's okay i have nowhere to go currently i just have, gotta go to bed and it's gonna look good this is me trying to talk myself into thinking it's gonna be okay which it will be it'll be okay so I'll give you guys one more look at both sides of the hair right now. The curls are kind of going into themselves, turning into like one big curl because we use the same barrel. We didn't alternate or anything, so that's to be expected. And then a look at the back. Maybe you'll see a difference. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so, oh, there you go. I just pulled all my hair to the front and you can see flex style is already starting to like relax a little bit, which I don't hate. I actually really like that. Let's do a fun little transition just for kicks, shall we? Let's uh, let's do this real quick. Okay, hello guys. It's the next morning, which is why I look like this. <laughs> let's look at the hair, shall we? Slept on my hair, didn't put any extra product on it, and I toss and turn in my sleep. I move around a lot, and I think we can see quite a difference here. I mean, I can see quite a difference. Can you guys? The Dyson side is still looking pretty curly. Like you still have a lot of that curl right there. While the flex has kind of relaxed a little bit right here. Still have a lot of body. Still have a good amount of wave here. So I think it's just what you're looking for when you're using these curling barrels. I would assume that you're looking for curls, right? You can definitely get more of a blowout look and feel with the curling barrels, of course. Usually my curls last a couple of days when I use the Shark Flex style, but I always tend to finish it off with a texturizing spray or a hairspray or something of that nature. And it lasts a little bit longer than this. I would say probably by the end of the night, if I didn't add any extra product in it, it would probably just fall and just give me a little bit of a wave. I don't think it would last all day like this, you know? Maybe like I was yesterday, last night, when I was like, oh, I messed up, this is too much, this is too curly this would probably serve you a lot better because it's going to fall a little bit faster and get to that point that you want it to be. If I'm really, really trying, I still kind of feel like the ends on the Dyson side feel a little bit drier than the ends on the Shark Flex style side. Like my hair here doesn't feel fried. It's just whenever I feel my ends, it feels a little bit drier. I don't know if I would consider that damage or just that my hair just ended up drying a lot more on this side than it did here. I like how quick this one was and I really like the fact that it wasn't super hot and like killing my neck and my scalp, you know? And again, I feel like it dried my hair more thoroughly while the Shark Flex style was a lot quicker or it seemed a lot quicker, right? I just, I guess I just don't hold it on my head as long because it does get pretty hot. As far as weight, they're pretty much the same. Neither one gave me any sort of issues. Like I didn't get any fatigue in my arms with either. They're both very lightweight. But if I were to choose... If I were to choose, I think the Dyson is slightly lighter, but it may be because this Shark Flexile has a bigger motor, like a stronger motor. That might be why, I'm not really sure. I really like how the Cool Shot is kind of all in one with the power button. And also, I like that the Cool Shot gets colder. I wouldn't say it gets cold, but I mean, it does cool down a lot more than the Shark Flexile. It definitely takes like double, maybe triple the time it takes the Dyson to get cool. I also wanted to mention last night that the Dyson is a little bit more quiet. I was able to hear my phone because I was watching videos while I was doing my hair. I don't necessarily 
get that with the shark flex style but usually i just put an airpod in and i'm good you know what are the price differences let me look at that because that's something that really determines you know if i want to buy something over another the dyson it'd be 5.99 for the complete set and that's all of the different dyson options whereas with the shark flex style it's $2.99, but if you did get the gift set one with the special edition Frizz Fighter, then it would be $3.49. How much would it be if you were a Rouge buying this during the Sephora Savings event? So the Dyson would still be $4.79, but that doesn't go without saying that the Shark would be cheaper as well, but it does get you closer to that $300 price point, you know? For $300 more, you're gonna feel a difference. Like if you already own the Flexile and you want to upgrade to the Dyson, I think that would be a good idea. I do want to say that as of right now, if I had started with the Dyson and I got the Shark, I don't know if I'd be happy because I like these extra features with the Dyson. But again, I got to try this round brush because I tend to round brush my hair often. I use the round brush on the Shark Flexile more than I use these barrels. So that might change my mind completely. Hey guys, so I just finished giving myself a blowout with the round brush on the Dyson. Solid, solid blowout. Overall, I think it looks really good, very bouncy. This is what I wanted those barrel curls to look like without thinking about it. I just, I don't know what happened. It completely slipped my mind whenever I use those pins with the curls. Oh, I will say this morning before I washed my hair, I did take some photos of what each side was looking like. And again, the Dyson side was looking a little bit more finished and had a little bit more texture because this morning the shark flex style part was definitely a lot flatter you can tell in the photos and i think that's important to note because i think that i would have probably redone my hair at that point with the shark whereas with the dyson i probably could have left it for another day i love the bounce i love the body that my hair has let me show you guys the back as well so you can see everything that's going on here so i definitely noticed a few things about the Dyson that differentiate it from the shark again with this round brush as you can see it does have only one type of bristle on there whereas with a shark we have those plastic bristles again but we also have those boar bristles here I find that the boar bristles are really nice because they really hold on to the hair they cling to it really nicely and whenever I do my blowouts I like to take it and just smooth it through all of my hair from from the very top to the bottom and I really like to focus a lot of that smoothing on the ends of my hair like I'll smooth it I'll smooth it I'll smooth it you know so you get that really finished almost professional like blowout I feel like that is one of the key differences or one of the key things that you need to do at an at-home blowout in order to make it look more professional this smooths out my hair flawlessly I feel like my hair is super sleek and shiny it looks nice and smooth but but the problem with that is it didn't really want to cling onto the ends of my hair. Whenever I get to the end of a strand, of course, it is going to be a little less dense, a little finer here. So whenever I was brushing through and I was trying, like I was attempting to go back and forth and really smooth it out, the hair was kind of just flying all over the place and it was really difficult to get it to catch onto this. I ended up trying to just wrap it around manually with my hand and then try to smooth it out, but I would only get a couple of like movements going before it would start to fly off of this brush. I was worried that the ends were going to look wiry or look like they're going all over the place, but honestly when I'm looking at it now after I pinned it up and let it cool, it doesn't look like that at all. My hair looks pretty much how it normally does after I do an at-home blowout. I mean, if I were to look really closely, I could probably find some areas like right there. It's not all smooth. You can see that it's a little bit wonky like it almost looks like there's a little bit of a fold maybe like a little crimp in there but overall when i'm looking at my hair i'm not i'm not noticing but i will say that it was a little frustrating like it wasn't as easy to do with the dyson as it is with the shark again this is my first time doing that with the dyson i'm sure it takes time and it takes practice as well maybe i would find a good technique to use this 
or get it to where it becomes second nature type of thing. But if we're looking at finish, the finish is great. It looks just like the shark. Off the top of my head, I can't say if it looks better or worse than the shark. I want to say that I think I get a little bit more volume up top with the shark because this is a lot larger like as you can see so i feel like i get a lot more versatility with this one granted sometimes i feel like this is holding on to my hair a little too much and i have to really pull at it and like i have to like yank it out of my hair also sometimes my neck will hurt <laughs> if i'm like really really going at it but i find if i take smaller sections i can kind of avoid that issue i feel like it goes faster with the shark because again we just have a lot more surface area to work with on this in terms of ease of use i think that the shark works better for me and take that with a grain of salt because again i have been using this device for over a year now so i like to think that i've gotten a lot of practice with it so i'm glad that i did that i'm glad that i tried it out with the round brush because now i feel like i have a little bit better of an understanding of how these two devices differ from each other in conclusion i'm going to try to be very critical of these two devices okay so the technology in the dyson i think far outweighs the shark in terms of comfortability of using it. it doesn't feel as hot it doesn't get uncomfortable it is more lightweight even by the slightest and i just really enjoy the fact that all the buttons and the switches and stuff are right here where i don't even have to move my hand out of position i can literally just use my thumb to use this. Whereas with a shark, we don't really get that. We have to definitely use two hands to move this up and down, unless you use this at the very bottom. If you do, I feel like that's a little bit more difficult to get control of, I don't know. I really, really love the novelty of this being able to switch over like that and become just a standard hair dryer. I love that. I think that this one would probably be the best bet for me for traveling because it just seems like, you know, you get that power. It goes a lot faster when you use it as a hair dryer, as well as the other attachments. Let's be real. It is a lot faster when I'm on vacation. I just want to be out the door. I really like the Dyson for the barrels. I love the curls that I got. I think the only thing that I would change definitely is that I wouldn't pin my curls first. I would just curl them, I would cool shot them, leave them alone, and then let them do their thing. I think that would be perfect for the type of curls that I like on myself. And in terms of the shark, I think I do prefer this round brush. At least for me, someone that does have pretty thick, long hair, this round brush size is really nice. And I love the combination of the boar bristles and these plastic bristles with it. If you have thinner hair, I would imagine that the Dyson would be better for you. Maybe if your hair tangles very easily when it comes to round brushes, this might scare you a little bit. If you have thin hair, you could definitely like get it tangled in this. This may smooth through it a little bit better. The actual look and feel of the blowouts themselves, they're pretty identical. The only difference again is I can notice if I really, really look closely and I'm trying to be picky about it, I could possibly have a couple of little crimps at the very ends of my hair here. I think that I'm convinced that the air wrap is that girl. Like <laughs> this is a pretty good, pretty great device, but $600 worth, no, but on sale, like if we're talking 400, maybe 450, I wanna say yeah, because you can definitely feel the extra features and technology that you get from this you know oh and i also feel like my hair completely dried by the way i know that i mentioned that sometimes with the shark i feel like i can't really get up in those roots with this but today whenever i use this to blow dry it as well as use the round brush i feel like everything dried pretty nicely if you have the means I think it's worth getting if this is going to be your round brush as well as your curling device. Maybe even if you need the paddle brushes and stuff for extra smoothing. I think this is a solid choice. I'm not sure why 
so many people hate the Dyson. I honestly think it comes down to hair type, what you're looking for a device to do, as well as practicing. These things, they don't come natural if you've never used like a tool like this one where it uses air technology, you know? It definitely takes practice. Now, if you don't have the means to purchase the Dyson and or you don't wanna spend that money, which I get because I myself have not spent that money on it because I just, I kept going back and forth. I just didn't really know what the hype was about, you know? If you wanna start playing around with it or if, again, you just can't justify dropping $600, maybe even $400, I think that the Shark is still an incredible Incredible, incredible tool. It dries your hair extremely quickly. I love this round brush tool on it. If you do have fine hair, I think that the gripping technology on these curling barrels will actually really benefit you. If you have coarser hair, I think that it would benefit you to smooth your hair out first, either with the round brush or the paddle brush, and then going in with this because I could see you having a difficult time kind of wiggling it through the hair. If you do have more coarse hair I think that this round brush would really benefit you I love that they added that like double bristle thing going on here and also if you do have thicker hair this larger round brush would be very nice overall I think that both devices are incredible I love both of them I might even consider buying the air wrap for myself now because I feel like it's that good like I feel like it's definitely worth it for me as someone that creates this content do I think that you need both of them no I don't I don't think that would be the smart thing to do because they do basically do the same thing just maybe differently but honestly it just comes down to preference I definitely think now after experiencing this round brush I don't take back what I said about being disappointed if you got the flex style after the air wrap but I do also think in addition to that, if you were solely using it for this round brush, I think you would be pleasantly surprised with the shark. Okay guys, that's everything. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I don't see a clear winner here. I'm gonna be completely honest. Let me know what you think about this video. Are you going to purchase the air wrap or the flex style? Or do you already have one? Are you thinking about switching it out? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below because I would love to open up that conversation. I know that people are constantly asking questions about both of these devices. So I think the more information, the better. All right guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!